cameras, power, battery. We have dummy battery, and then we have the battery that goes in the camera, and that needs to be charged. You also plug it up with USB, USB-C, you plug it into the wall. I'm a Sony camera user, and that's the way Sony will have you to do it. Now, you can put dummy battery in there, which is what a lot of people do and don't do, and they have their justified reasons. You got a $2,000 camera or more, you kind of don't want to put some other kind of crap in there, but if you're like me and you have a home studio set up, um, you kind of like automated things, so I'm an automated guy. I actually have seven cameras in the room. There's four cameras around my desk total. And so there's one, which is the left camera, and that has a confidence monitor. There is the front camera, and that has a confidence monitor. And then there's the right camera that has a confidence monitor. And then there's the camera that's overhead to show down on the desk. Okay, coming around. And then there's this camera, and that camera here shows me from behind and over the desk. Oh, there's another camera. And that camera right there actually is what I call the room camera, and that shows everything from a uh, top view, like fly on the wall camera. And then there's um, this camera right here that I'm talking. Oh, wait a minute, hold up so you can see it. This camera right here, the one that I'm looking in, and it's on the Edelchrome chip plug. Anyway, with all of those cameras, um, the three that are in the air, the one over the desk, the one over here on the wall, and the one up there, the room shot, which it would be this camera right here. I don't actually want to go up and turn those cameras on. And so if you use a dummy battery, you actually can power on, oh, sorry. If you use a dummy battery, you can actually power on the camera and leave it on. And then you can plug it up to a wall outlet that can be controlled by Alexa. With Alexa, Alexa can turn the cameras on and turn them off. When I walk into the room, I like to keep things simple. Alexa, turn cameras on. Basically what you saw there is that I have the cameras automated and they're also going with my lights. So that when I know I'm about to go live, I can just tell Alexa to turn the cameras on and she will turn all of the cameras on at the same time because they are dummy battery powered. Alexa, turn cameras on. Now, if you don't dummy power the battery, um, the camera, then you actually physically have to turn it on and off or you won't be able to automate the camera. You won't be able to automate your cameras if you use the internal battery and the USB plug because it will not shut the camera off when you cut the charging power. It'll stay on and just drain the battery. But if you automate it like me, then you put a dummy battery in there and then when you tell Alexa to turn everything off, she will turn it off and your cameras are off. If not, you have to individually turn each camera off. This is where it gets a little tricky. The camera on my desk, this camera right here, I used to just plug that up USB because I used to take it in the field with me a lot. And because I was taken in the field, um, I didn't want to have to keep taking the battery out and putting the battery back in. So basically what I did was I also put a dummy battery in that one as well. So now when I come in, everything turns on at the same time. This is an advantage and it's a disadvantage, but I've been successful with dummy batteries since day one. Now for my full frame cameras, um, I actually don't use them in the studio. And so they never, I never actually have to put 
the dummy batteries in there unless I'm using a Cine rig and I power it up that way or one of my Cine rigs I use the USB port with the battery plugged in there anyway. That's just the pros and cons. So you have to make the choice for how you have to make the choice. I will have to say this rig right here that I'm using, I actually have Condor Blue dummy battery um, and it's a DTAP that rolls right into this whole rig so that I can just hit one V mount battery, turn it on and everything powers up. So that is an advantage where, you know, the battery stuck in there, it won't work. Again, you have to do what's best for you. And that's just my little simple take on the difference between using a battery inside of the camera with the USB and also flipping to a dummy power. With the dummy power, you set it and forget it. If the camera is behind something away from you behind a teleprompter, you might not want to keep reaching back and cutting it on and off. And then you might not want to deal with running it and then the battery kind of drains along with the power and then, you know, it kind of overheats and stuff like that. With the dummy battery in there, it doesn't generate the same amount of heat because the battery inside is not charging. And that's just something where for streamers, it might be a problem. Now, if your camera's on the go, like I was using my ZV-E10 uh, for a while before I got into full frames, I would just put the regular battery in there, charge it USB. I would use it to stream an hour or two at max, and then I could just take it off and go out. But since I don't need that camera to go out, I just put a dummy battery in there and it's straight powered by the wall. There it is, so you have it. So any questions on the advantages, disadvantages of dummy battery power or putting the battery in there and charging it USB, uh, be sure to hit me in the comment section down below and I'll be glad to get back to you with any questions that I may answer or any take on it. I am safe using dummy batteries. Some people, they don't really trust it, but this is just my take and this is how I automate these cameras in this studio. All right, thank you for watching. Peace.